Hey guys, welcome back to another live plane explain video. Monday afternoon. Got time to play some some hundred for you too. So ten and off is a pure core. A board where you could potentially implement some donks, but it's quite a difficult strategy. <laughs> That's like really weird to face an orbit here. I think that's clearly a wrong sizing for the texture. But yeah, if if your opponent does anything <laughs> like that, you certainly don't need donks, I would imagine. I don't know. But we have seven five suited and five two suited. So really don't get the overbet here. A screen off will be a free bet. Yeah, basically the thing with donking is, while it's easy to identify the boards on which you could donk, it's a lot less easy to play the subsequent lines good and have a good understanding. Let's say I donkey calls, I need to know all the runouts and which sizings I want to play. Then I need to know the hands that I need to check, then I also need to play well in the line where I don't donk, but now also have a weaker range. So it makes the whole spot a lot more complicated. So I would not necessarily advise implementing donkings when you haven't put in a decent amount of studying work. Because also you are out of position. So even for in position, we also not know perfectly well how to play versus the donk. He's at least in position, which is generally just an easier spot to play. So, also there are still a lot of people who are just see too much on those textures and then you just don't need any donks anyway and can just continue by check raising more. For free suit that will be a continue. Um, but we will fold versus any sizing on this texture. The back to flash draw loses a lot of value once there's a front to flash draw and our hand is while it maybe looks appealing with some backdoor straight draws, it's just even versus one third, it would be too weak to continue. Easier free but with the nines. Especially on tournament zoom where the rake is quite high when there is no recreational in the big blind. I play free but only on the button. If there's a recreation on the plans, then I would start implementing a flatting range. Sevens can be free, but range down for out of position here, I think. He does find it, unfortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have gone for the check back. So let's set out on this one. This four, I think, is a four. When the three are super connected, I don't think you actually play any races. I think it was like nine, seven, six. I would need a lot of races, like 30. Like basically every hand that continues needs to race 30 to 40% of the time. But versus can know if it's again a small bet. Quite fast. I think we have two options here. I don't hate racing with the ace and spades. Block some hands that will of course continue or even jam versus the race. 
My race is probably a bit too small, but probably fine anyway. And now the river, I will go for the gem. And hope there's a hand like nine so <laughs> pong gems. Okay, that makes our life easy. But yeah, quite an interesting spot. Like on the flop, if the board was a bit less connected, I would need to do a lot of racing. But when it's so connected, it's actually so bad for me that my. Even when I have aces or kings, I don't I want to race really. I think. And, and on the 8 to 1, it gets interesting because. Of course, I don't think he will know the spot very well. So block by block might be a reasonable sizing. Perhaps he goes bigger with a one at attempt. And I am put in a bit of a tough spot. I have, of course, 10x that are better than than East King, but I think I can't pure fold my East Kings on the turn. And then I would need to continue either by calling or racing. And I think with the ace in space, racing has a lot of merits. Versus half pot before it versus a smaller sizing, I would, I would have pressed um, call or race. And then I would have gone for the value jam on the river. But yeah, he thankfully saved us some money here, I think. So a very interesting spot and a tough spot to start the video. I also haven't really sighted a spot in those positions but button cutoff because I generally tend to focus my study time on the more frequent spots. Is queen always a free bet in those positions? We'll also call versus a small forward, and that's a great texture for us. You could play a ton of different strategies here, but I go for the 25 range. Tibble 2 is half pot check. And check 9, no back to anything, seems like one of the hands that goes into the check range more often than not. And those king check x textures are so great that you basically almost range bet uh, twice. <laughs> I mean, not quite, of course, but you have like still a 7, like I think a 70% bearing frequency on the turn, and I think my hand is great. To bearer. But also a texture where you would not really slow play much. It's a really good texture, so if you have like king, queen, king, ten, you are quite inclined to bet those hands yourselves. Here we check down. Versus if the board was like king, four, three, turn five or six which is not nearly as good of a texture as this double broadway texture for you, then you would need to implement a lot of checking and also protect the checking range with those, with those top pair sort of holdings. And I think maybe even ace check could sometimes bury the turn. 
It's kind of a nice hand to bear return and check out river with. When you unblock the flush draw and clean them. Don't like that the small band is tanking here. <laughs> Probably okay, just folds. Um, I don't really think that's quite the range but board, but on 200 zone versus the average player, I think this just performs too well not to, to go for it, and it's it's going to be a high frequency seabed for 25 anyway. But with the low two low connected cards that are also two-tone versus a stronger player, I think you definitely need a check range. Not saying that this guy isn't strong, I, I don't really know, but... And on the turn, I actually don't mind checking this combo. So I have to play 150 check. But when I bet, I kind of destroy my pair outs with this hand. And it's also nice to make some nuts on a 5 river, of course, in the check check line. I mean, I wouldn't fold you at all for betting on the turn. I think both players are likely fine. But if it goes like check check and the river is a 6, my 6 just has a lot more value. And I have a good bluff catcher. And if I go barrel on the turn and he calls and I hit the 4 or a 6, I mean sure sometimes I beat a, a flush draw, but my, my, my pair outs are going to be a lot less um, meaningful, I would say. Although maybe on this exact board, not because he has three X and two sex with, with the flush drop. Face the free but from the big blind, the big the big sizing. Kind of in a tough spot here. Usually most guys don't free bet enough in the small blind and uh, the big blind. And when the sizing is also bigger than I think just gonna look at this. But yeah, while on the turn, the turn is of course great for us and we get to bear a decent amount. It's just important that you don't bear everything that has equity and then check everything that doesn't have any equity. So like let's say it's 7, 18 hearts. I think it's fine to, to blast that hand off sometimes. But then you don't always need to bear your 4, 5, 4, 6, is 4, is 5 sort of hands. Every flush draw. If you are one of the players who just barrels everything that has a decent draw on a good card for you and checks all this garbage, then your your range is quite screwed. Because your betting range will be way too strong and your checking range will just be super weak and you will fold a ton to river bets. You won't find any river races because you don't make new nuts, so Versus the 2x open, 5-4 is close, but I think I would probably call. Not our board here, of course. And I don't think you should ever check, like, he can range but even for a bigger sizing on this texture and those positions, I think. So just fold and Move on to the next one. In those positions, I'm actually implementing gems. And it's a pretty simple strategy. You jam most of your ace king off, and then um, you balance it by throwing in some pocket kings that also benefit from just outright stacking his queens. And this way, you deny a lot of equity and actually should fold his king. So, 
it is also somewhat easy to make uh, mistakes for the MP, game, MP player. So I think when I jam Ace King, he actually has to fold it. Where if I were to forbid and he jams, then Ace King off is actually becoming close. And you want to avoid that close spot by just and just denying equity, ripping it in yourself. It can never be too bad. Button versus cutoff, I would not play champs, because here you just have the nice effect of him having to continue a screen off versus your small forward. But those positions, in those tighter positions, you don't have that effect, so I think that's why jamming here is more attractive. King it off also. Somewhat of a close hand to open race. This guy seems like a wreck, this guy seems like a wreck. 2.2, I think it's a bit too weak in this wreck structure. Fold, fold, fold. <laughs> so nine tools, I think a 200 sum would be a fold, but let's call it for the video. It's it's super close anyway, so whatever. I think nine three is the, the threshold. Interesting. That's a uh, medium sizing, so definitely not range betting the sport. I mean, you shouldn't. Range betted for a small sizing meter, but of course you never know. And I will mainly click call. Table two is a pretty pretty great texture for us. And I think I can actually bet one big band range. He does check quite fast on table two. Had he bet small on the flop, I'm pretty sure that I would have an, a very big step side in here because the straights get there. Because he bet bigger, I'm not quite sure, but I think a big sizing is probably still fine. I mean, I don't think I want to bet depolarized here. I mean, there's maybe some, if you had the better flop even bigger, then I think betting smaller in my case wouldn't be too bad. Table one, we will go for the check. And we were straight. So I think I just go three quarters. And can probably still value bet for the sizing with certainly a set, probably king. I'm not sure about two pair is the threshold here. I would imagine that you can still bet two pair. And here we face the over bet, and I actually think on this run out, having an ace might not even be that great. Usually, ace x is a good hand to bluff catch river because it doesn't bluff his ace x, but his bluffs might come from hands like a7, a8 that he now doesn't check down. And he also overbets, so I think I'm fine for him. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Let's say the flop was 983 and he went for a big bet on the flop. 
and turn is a prick. So all of his hands that had incentive to bet big on the flop still want to bet the turn and he checks. I think that would be a note where I would want to step small and depolarized and just benefit from him heavily overfolding in that note because he polarizes the flop and then checks the turn on a prick where he still wants to mainly continue burying his strong hands. But this is not really quite the spot, right? I mean, he first of all, he doesn't bet huge. That's like a mediocre sizing. And then the turn is a card on which he has to slow down a lot anyway. So if, if he has ace king, king, queen, he's not incentivized to put in a ton of money on that run out. I mean, he can still bet it, but he has to check quite a high frequency. So I think this would be a spot where I want to step very polarized and just put, put in the maximum amount of money with my strong hands. And on the river, I'm not sure exactly where that value threshold lies, maybe somewhere around king 8, I don't know, 10-4 suited will be a mix free bet. And 9-8 off versus 2.5, I think we go for a fold. Is the check. Play 75 step or check. With the back to flush draw, I think stabbing here is actually fine. I mean, certainly you can't do it too often, but I think the hand has decent properties to, to go for the c -bet. It does go for the turn dunk, which I think is, is a fine strategy. I'm not going to bet too many 7x big, although I certainly will have some. Like A7, I think, is a very high frequency step. 7x in spades, of course. I don't think I will do anything other than check call. <laughs> very fascinating run out. Um, I mean, I, I think I might get a lot of money here actually because there's so many draws that miss. So on the river, I'm only betting a boat. And I think 150 is, is the sizing of choice then. And I will have to give up quite some plus here because I have just way too many. I have all the I have all the 98 uh, flush draws, gut shots, what have you, that need to call versus his, uh, or call or raise versus his small turn probe. So I certainly can't bluff everything. Then, I mean, I still have some do sex that sometimes bear a bit big on the flop. So, a bit disappointing that I didn't get value. <laughs> if I was in his shoes, I would be quite inclined to bluff catch. But, yeah, unfortunate. But yeah, for the most part, stabbing mainly strong 10x and then, and then some weaker 10x only, I think, if I have a back to flush draw. I mean, recreation player, this is 3x, I think I'm still out of here. Is the free bet? Ace King off actually does a decent amount of flatting, and I roll low, so we go for the flat call this time. Not the greatest texture, but we will still continue as a half pot bet pure, I think, and versus seventy five. Um, probably still have to frequency call, but not every time I imagine. Not not super sure actually. But we face the check. Um, queen nine is too weak. And I think Ace Queen would step quite often. And I think Ace King mainly checks. And if I want to step, I would need a diamond. So this hand, I imagine, will be a pure check back.
typical one, not really a range bad board, and King Nine also seems like one of the hands that doesn't necessarily want to bet. Roll low, so let's go for the check back. And now I think we just check down our Ace King. Face a small bet on the turn. We don't get to fold much at all. All of our 5x and 7x have a gut shot. Check Queen 10. I mean, it's close. If I, if I had it, my hand would also be better. I think this is weak enough that it can at least fold sometimes, and I wrote low. So, yeah, I only get to fold here like 18% or something of my range, but let's focus really quickly on table 1, uh, table 2. And it doesn't appear to me that I have many hands that are weaker than this. So I will actually go for a bet. And I think 150 or 75 would be both fine. Nice hand. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's, so let's say I have king queen, snap call, every ace needs to call, then I need to call hands like queen check. Um, king 10 will need to call. But yeah, this seems like one of my very weakest hands. Face the 3x from the unknown recreational player, I mean, in theory, this would be a fold. Just as the recreational player, we. Maybe we can make it profitable. Kind of close. Could see myself fold, raise or calling. We'll check this one. And I think in theory this would fold. But the recreation player often has too wide of a range preflop and then yeah, bets everything on the flop. Always will call this on the turn now. We don't have many 4x and he bets 75, so I don't think I get to fold many, many board pairs anyway. Unlucky. Rough, but I think I probably still have to call very close spots here on both tables. I mean, this hand I just called with the intention to to hope that he goes check check and I get to bluff on the river. Don't think this is a theoretical call on the flop. And the 4 3 suited, I'm not just not sure on the flop. I will need to check it. I mean, the bad one first. It's probably a fold them versus 25. Maybe those hands get in. Yeah, we need, we need to review it. On the turn, I'm, I'm certain that my hand is a pure, a pure continue. I don't think I get to fold really any board pair or almost any board pair versus this 75 sizing. And yeah, of course, not knocking on the river and losing, so that's fine, but flop is ambitious, not sure. And Here I think I like I like my flop call still. Close but the fold. This is too bad one. Just trying to hope that it goes straight check. I have a very profitable bluff on the river. So that's also like a little tip for you guys if you play with those guys who have too much of a range, see better too much, are face up on the turn. Fold less, <laughs> just 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 call a lot more when the when the bet small. Oh, and here we have. Most likely a fold. Have not seen anything that this guy is crazy, so. To mark. Now to honest with his sizing, I mean, don't think I can fold a queen high flash draw. But yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't win either one of the spots. <laughs> I 
I roll really high and King 9 is actually sometimes a free bet. The forge. It's awesome. <laughs> But unlucky. Fight more fast on table two. Think betting one big plant range is again a decent strategy here. And on the turn, I always have a check. And I think the betting threshold on the turn is a decent queen. And then you would also not really split on the river. Let's say, add a 10. I don't think you would go for an over bet on the river. I think you just bet 75 and 75 on brick runouts with, with your strong queen X and 10 X and merge those together. Because if you have a 10, you don't really want to bet too big because then he is less likely to have a 10 and more likely to have a queen and that can actually start folding once you get once you get too big, so that's kind of how those paired boards work. There are not not too many high EV spots for us so far. Dead. This was Batman versus Big Band. If he could almost range check the sport. Big Band versus MP gets a lot better actually. Because he should have way less fives and threes, deuces and fours. So it's more like ace, plank, plank almost. So while we still need a checking frequency, because we just have so much trash in the big band, I think the zebra frequency will be a lot higher and king queen is actually a very decent hand to bear along those ace attacks just because you block as strong as ace x. Um, and it's also good uh, hands to bear turns and rivers because he, you unblock his pocket pairs that will fold and block as strong as the king uh, ace x that will go down. Um, flop and check check, when you have a lot of medium strong hands, like in this case, you can go for a half pot probe and I can bet even uh, a 7, like a hand like 9-7 suited would also be a, a high frequency bet, it has to call so many worse hands. And table 2, you can go either way, this way we will go for a check. <coughs> And this is the big step we will forward. Table one is actually pretty decent texture for us. And I don't hate going for a small seabed. The main intention is to try to just deny equity from those guys. They have a lot of pocket pairs probably that will have to fold even versus a small sizing. And on the turn we have to check and hopefully not face the question. But yeah, you can... Those double probably boards are really good in those positions. So while on most textures I, I play very passively out of position, there are some boards like this, and especially king high boards, where you get to get to be quite aggressive. Again, a spot when the low cars are already connected, 
I mean, you could use a ton of different processings, but I think half would be fine. Then you also need to sometimes check. And versus this guy who is like a semi-recreational player, I'm, I'm not super sure if I can still bet, go for another street with, with my hand. I don't think he would bet queen 10, king 10, so I think I would I lose less versus those hands by checking. And he goes for an over bet, which is uh, interesting. Just forward, but yeah, perhaps he got me there. But he's, he's gen I, I generally speaking, think that this guy is quite tight, so it's definitely don't want to call down a uh, second pair here. But it is, of course, always suspicious. And you think, oh, we checked back the turn, and then he goes over back the river. It's not, I don't think he's wrapping that many combos, but. Now, ace and lose rainbow, I think this ball is just fine to go for uh, the small range bet. I mean, probably in theory you would have like 20% checks or something, but simplifying that to a range, but strategy should be fine. of his defend. And you will also call versus a small seabed, but snap free quarter, we are out of there. Also quite high frequency seabed. for the one big plant sizing once more. Let's see if we have better success this time. But can feel the turn the turn bets coming already. 150 or check. Nines of course always checks. He snap checks back. And if there wasn't a flush then I would for sure go for a block. I mean, basically the flop was almost checked down because the sizing was so small on the flop and he still has all of his adex. Very close with nines, not super sure. Until um, Toby can fold. <sighs> we are in a tough spot once more. I think it's not a terrible hand to call down with. And King nine, probably fine. But also quite a, quite an interesting hand that I will certainly leave with you. I'm not sure if I played this hand well. Also want to take a look on the flop strategy. How often I can actually see bet if I bet one big blind, and then how thin I can go once it goes check check. So the one big band sizing is a sizing that I've implemented just recently. And just like I said about the, the turn donks in the beginning of the uh, the flop donks in the beginning of the video. When you have learned a new strategy, you should also know the subsequent lines and so far I don't the, I don't know the value thresholds perfectly well. Easy pure call on the turn. Call a bit faster due to my time bank, but can you do? 
and on the reverb it's probably 40% the 10 while it blocks green 10 also blocks most of his bluffs that he still has and quite far down and yeah easy check not bluffing green 7 seems white to me but we take it This one you can just go 25. And Obak flash turn, but also brings in the Obak card is pretty good for us, so I would size down to one third. And I think King Jack is mainly going to continue barreling. But yeah, playing the spot as a Decent frequency, small small sizing, I think is decent. I roll pretty low, so this time I will actually just call. Does continue bearing. going to click call. And he gives up on the river. And yeah, I mean, most of your trips you fast play, especially on a board where you have, don't have that many trips in the first place. And you just want to play a bigger pot with a strong hand, of course. But if you then, if you always slow play, uh, always fast play your trips, then you will have troubles calling down on, on, on future runouts. Because there's like so many runouts where you can put so much pressure on and if you never call trips then you can just go massive with the sizings on the turn and you are just in a horrible spot so sometimes slow playing should be fine. There's a lot of interesting bed sizes. TV player versus um, recreational player, just go. Big hands, big bet. Extra for us, and versus this sizing is it we need to call. And this seems like a perfect check race candidate. You basically check race your weaker offsuit hands a lot more aggressive because you fold out. If a check race is 8, you will fold is 9, is 10 with no backdoor. While I would never check raise a hand tag is check or is green. And you don't want to bet you don't want to check raise for a massive setting. Now usually once the check raise and the flush gets in there on the turn, you want to you often play one third range. I think here this is actually not the case. Because the board is paired and we will just have a lot of uh, a lot of weak hands like pocket pairs two sacks that we don't want to put in more money. So I think you actually play something like half pot and then you check half the time. And my hand seems like it wants to bet most often. But we'll also take a look at this, like frequency on the turn, also not perfectly sure if my half pot sizing is, is correct, perfect, so perhaps it should be 75, but those are kind of nuances as the big forward versus this guy, just, just mark it. 
But they are not an auto range bet, range bet on the turn when the flush gets in. And roll low, so I will go for the check. If I had kings with a heart, I would rather see bet than those one. He checks very fast again. Interesting. So I think usually would play a smaller delay sizing, but give him his insta check. I'm kind of just inclined to play my hand. But I think the delay sizing, the proper delay sizing would probably be small to value bet the ace-king, ace-queen sort of holdings if you want to bet one sizing. But you don't need to play balanced versus every opponent. Interesting, 3.5x open race. Queen 4 4, pretty terrible texture for us. If it was lower, like Queen 2 2, where he doesn't have that many 2 6, we can start seabetting again, but I think this is quite a high frequency check. A lot of different bet sizings here make sense in my opinion. This hand kind of fits well into an overbet, getting him to fold king checking turn. I don't often split sizings, but here it seems fine versus every player that's not really strong. Like I wouldn't expect guys uh, uh, to check back a four really <laughs> on the flop. So I will want to have an overbet range for my decent queen x plus, especially for kings and aces. I think versus two x versus two weaker players I, I will actually call. Not a theory call, but probably, but yeah, just trying to get in a spot versus the weaker players. So I would just have a range of very strong hands, like 4x or a pair of strong queen x. Then I still have a lot of medium value hands, like is king, is check, is 10, pocket, turn 7x, pocket deuces, that wouldn't mind blocking on the turn. So here it makes a lot of sense to, to split your range. I mean, we have so many, so, so many infinite bluff candidates that I don't think I will go for it here. It will suck if this guy shows down king high, but I don't think he would, he would fold it here. Just as two players, it seems a bit too ambitious to, to go for a massive over bluff here. Turn five, definitely a texture where we need quite a lot of checkbacks. But King Queen suited, I think, is also a fine hand to go for the C bet. Probably just look at the RNG. So probably would have, would say, a global C bet frequency is probably around 55, 50 percent. Not all very high, so let's go for the the barrel. If I face a check raise, it's close, but it's 
goes for the very large check risk, so I don't think it's close anymore. So yeah, we'll four versus this 27 sizing for sure. So kind of a shame to bet fold to our cards back to flush draw, but yeah, that is what it is sometimes. If he went to like 20 BB or something, I would have pressed call. Yeah, not too many fun spots today. Not too many fun spots at all, but that's part of poker. Try to play those spots well, make the most out of it, or lose the, lose the minimum. And video's going on for quite some time now as well, so I think I can play a couple more hands till I sit out. Call it a video. Close, but a bit too weak to open. Alright guys, thanks for watching and see you next one. Bye!